When it comes to NBA fans in 2024, there is really three distinct fan groups in the sport. Group A, the fans who value advanced metrics, things like PR, Raptor, PIPM, these kind of made up acronyms, made up stats that have formulas longer than most children's books. Group B, the kind of pure hooper crowd only values the eye test, stats be damned, I watch highlights, crossovers, I want fadeaways, tween hezzy crosses, and I think Kyrie Irving is the greatest player in NBA history. Now, the last group, Group C, this is where most fans, most rational fans reside. These fans value stats and the importance of them, use some advanced metrics, but at the end of the day realize certain things in basketball and in sports can be quantified by a mathematic formula. I would say the majority of sports fans and majority of NBA fans reside in Group C. But today, I want to kind of go in on this one group, the pure hooper crowd, who values things like a player's bag, their handles, and could care less of a player shoots 8 of 31 from the field. And historically speaking, these type of fans have just absolute disdain for someone like Giannis. And they'll go as far as saying Giannis isn't a great basketball player, putting that in quotations, because for them Giannis doesn't play basketball the right way or the way they want him to play. And looking at Giannis so far this year, once again at the peak of his powers and a force on both ends, having 29.6 points per game, top 5 in the NBA, 10.4 boards, 4.6 assists, 1.1 blocks on 60% shooting. Currently in the NBA, Giannis is the only player averaging 25 plus points and shooting above 60% from the field. And pretty important note, he's doing that in under 33 minutes per game. If you want to talk overall value per minute, Giannis at this point is the most valuable player on both ends of the floor. As in those 33 minutes, he does virtually everything you want from an NBA player. Now, with that being said, those pure Hooper fans who only value someone's bag, they'll look at those stats at production and just toss it to the side. As for Giannis, they don't care if he guards 1 through 5, scores 30, 35, even 40 points. Always and forever, these guys only want Giannis to do crossovers, fadeaways, and play basketball like Kevin Durant. I think the 2020, the advent of NBA 2K, has kind of ruined fans' perception of what a 7 footer should be capable of. As for someone like Giannis, a guy his size with his strength, his overall handle and control is still top tier for guys his size. Look, he's not Dan Willard, Steph Curry with those type of handles. And late in games, won't be the shot maker, or the shot creator of those players. And really, in NBA history, there's like one, two guys maximum who were seven feet tall and had guard-like skills. My overall problem with the eye test crowd, the anti-Giannis crowd, they try to put Giannis in a box that they want him to be in. When Giannis, in his own lane, is super dominant and at worst a top three player. As looking at this year in the paint at the rim. He's as dominant as ever, ranking first in the NBA at 8.5 made field goals in the paint on nearly 80% shooting. Compare 2024 Giannis to 01 Shaq in the paint. Shaq in 01 averaged 6.8 makes, also first in his era, on 77% shooting. What we're dealing with in Giannis is the Shaq prototype for 2024. At this point for the Greek Freak, if there is contested threes, semi-contested threes, I would just say pass on those and don't take them. Because at the rim, get in the basket, he's at 01 Shaq type levels. Imagine back in Shaq's peak in his prime, if analysts and fans said Shaq should play more like Kevin Garnett in a guard-like fashion. That'd be ridiculous, because of course Shaq is a one-of-one -one talent and more dominant and effective than even KG. The same point goes to Giannis versus Kevin Durant. KD is great in his own right, and so is Giannis. But for the Greek Freak, he doesn't need to fit Kevin Durant's prototype to dominate in the NBA. And speaking of KD, this take from Rashad McCants just kind of exposed this crowd of the pure hooper, ball don't stop type fans. As this guy with a straight face said KD when it's all said and done will be ahead of LeBron James. 
This 100% is tween hezzy propaganda and pure hooper nonsense. As LeBron for 95% of his career was better than Kevin Durant. And the accolades, the championships LeBron has, they dwarf any KD titles, KD MVPs, or KD seasons. I would bet my entire life savings, anything I own, that KD when it's all said and done doesn't touch LeBron James from an all-time perspective. And for someone like Rashad McCann to say this, while well, LeBron still playing in the NBA dominate his age, it is utterly ridiculous. The only thing KD has on LeBron, I would say is like better handles, better pull-up jump shots, and generally a more appealing style to the overall eye test. Besides that, LeBron vs. KD, it's really never in a discussion from an all-time perspective. Now, looking at Giannis and the Bucks, their overall team has been pretty good above average, but not as dominant as I would like. And the overall Dame Giannis duo, they've had flashes, moments, even quarters of greatness. But their overall connection at this point is a little iffy. And most times in the fourth quarter, it's either your turn, my turn, one guy takes all the shots, and the other guy kind of sits back on the sidelines. And of course, Dame has hit big shots, had big moments already in a Bucks uniform. But pretty important note, the Bucks' best fourth quarter player is actually Giannis. Seems crazy. But look at the stats. Giannis this year is averaging 8.6 points per game in the fourth quarter and ranks fourth in the NBA. Compared to Dame, he's averaging 7.4 points, which ranks 17th. No matter which way you slice it, how many times you discredit Giannis, at the end of the day, he's at worst a top three guy, and some would argue the second or best player in the league. And to make one last comparison, Tim Duncan at his peak in 03, he didn't have the best bag in the world, the best handles, but still everyone recognized Tim Duncan was the best player in the world. The same with Shaq in 01, Kareem in the 80s, and guys like Wilton Russell before that. There's tons of guys in history who are the best player, a top three player, who didn't have the bag of these guard-like players. My overall point being, this pure hooper nonsense, tween hezzy cross, gotta have the highlights, the plays, the flashy handles, all that is vastly overrated. And at the end of the day, what matters is the player's production and their overall impact. If you give me two highlight plays, Bones Highland type plays, but you shoot 4 of 18, does that outweigh your one highlight and your one spectacular play? And just because someone like Giannis can't have that magical moment, that magical crossover, doesn't make him worse a player or less than the guy like Zach Levine. And believe me, I've seen actual fans argue Zach Levine is a better basketball player than Giannis. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.